morning, class. Lovely to see you all safely online today to discuss what the pandemic attack has taught us about honouring human rights. Zainab Hussein, why don't you go first by giving us examples of Bahrain? Thank you, Dr. Peterson. I'll try to be very quick. COVID-19 was declared a global pandemic by the World Health Organization in March 2020. Bahrain was already working towards tracking its spread. With immediate effect, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued directives to establish an executive level committee led by His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to overlook the whole process of getting Bahrain through this global crisis by providing access to healthcare for all citizens alike and upholding the values of human rights. The late His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa constantly and consistently ensured that government services would uphold their commitment to excellence. All government agencies were adhering promptly to directives. We have seen this in many of our government's policies. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, mandated with this portfolio, together with other national bodies, work very hard to ensure that all country regulations and procedures are in accordance with international best practice. The COVID-19 pandemic has really made this visible. Bahrain <laughs> والحق في في حرية كإنسان أعتقد هذا قمة الإنسانية وهذا ما أمرنا رب العالمين به. Three key points I wish to mention are freedom of movement and business, continuity with the least disruption to normal life, meant continuous communication to the public to ensure high level awareness that would help us avoid mandatory lockdown. Once the right protection measures were in place, commerce resumed as normal. Shopping malls, barbers, tailors, candy stores. Most businesses were open provided they adhered to the precautionary protection regulations. Bahrain went to great lengths to ensure all citizens remained its number one priority. All fundamental government services, health and education were made available remotely. Services kept being added to online portals, providing thousands to access online educational tutorials, medicinal replenishments, online purchases, legal aid, and online judicial hearings too. The telecom's infrastructures and available artificial intelligence were strong enough to adapt to the new market demands, and almost overnight, trends became more virtually centered. Bahrain boasts its well-ingrained values of coexistence and mutual respect. Great care went into ensuring that all expatriates and migrant labor populations were properly looked after. Mobile facilities were sent to large communities to conduct medical swaps. Free access to medical treatment centers came with it. Housing arrangements were provided to avoid cramping. All community-level food and supplies were distributed to those in need. Nobody was left behind. Bahrain's humanitarian efforts were all encompassing. They extended to those with prison sentences too. Inmates were tested and treated during the pandemic with the utmost care. The virus was not allowed to sweep the prisons. Video conferencing facilities were installed for inmates to remain connected with their families. In a human gesture, His Majesty the King granted pardon to over 900 convicts that hadn't completed their prison sentences. Excellent. Team Bahrain, that's what it's called. Everybody works together to overcome challenge. Team Bahrain, the true spirit of our country, us. All of us, a nation of giving and trust, a nation that values human rights, that is who we are. Bahrain will remain a land of love where everybody enjoys security and harmony. We are fully confident that the Kingdom of Bahrain, with the solidarity of its citizens, is capable of overcoming this challenge. Thank you, Dr. Peterson. Thank you, 
all for listening. I am happy to take questions. Thank you.